in economy is calling on you to tune in this Thursday and every third Thursday of the month from 8 p.m. for Agri Action, where we provide you with factual information. Be part of the movement, join the discussion, make your contribution, make a difference. Agri Action, where we seek to make you competitive, creative, commercial, and update you on local and global opportunities and trends. Agri Action, a program of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy. Join us right here on DBS Radio and via our social media platforms. Agri Action, where agriculture comes to life. Good evening to everyone. Good evening in Radio Land. We are happy to join you. As you just heard our promo, this is another program of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy. I am your presenter and host, Petro Grell Schillingford. Um, just to give you a little background, a little insight. I mean, we've heard the call, we've heard the cry for another interactive radio program where we reach out to the farmers and fishers. And we had some pressure from our higher ups, and therefore we're here tonight to execute this program. Um, our first of a series of radio programs. So just to give you another, some more, feed, um, more background, sorry, Agri Action will be here once a month, every Thursday from 8 p.m. But we're taking advantage of the free time on DBS tonight because of the... I'm changing I'm scheduling so we're doing 7 to 8 30 p.m. but normally we'll be here from 8 p.m. every third Thursday and we're starting off our program with a bang we have in studios with us and we're very happy to have the Honorable Minister of Agriculture Mr. Roland Roy good evening to you Dion, particularly our farmers good night and I'm very happy to be here yeah, and picture to be your first host on um Agri Action. Um, Agri Action will be a very informative um, radio program where we will be providing facts um, um, to the farmers and basically speaking to government investments in agriculture. And of course, not just planting agriculture, but looking at the entire agri food system and how we can make lives better for, for farmers in Dominica. So I'm very happy to be here and to, I'm honored to be your first guest. And I'm looking forward to some. A successful program tonight and of course the rest of the programs to come we are happy to have you because what we're saying is that we're starting the ball rolling from the top down so therefore you will tell us the plans the programs of the ministry your vision etc and of course we'll have technical officers we will have other persons in admin etc come on board with us but before we go into the program we know you as minister of agriculture you've been from the north etc but do we really know you mr minister because we know you as an extension officer those of us who worked with you and you've come full circle but we, within that journey tell us a little more about yourself in terms of professionally where you've been what you've been doing It, um, in 2000, in the year 2000, as an agricultural extension officer in the North Agricultural Region, and I was assigned to the Cottage Sub District. That's where I'm from. And, um, well, coincidentally, I'm now the power for that same district. Um, from there, I worked like over a decade um, with the ministry as an extensionist, moving from different levels, um, from AO3 to AO1. And when I left the ministry after serving for 12 years, um, my last position at that 
time when I left was that I was a coordinator for the National Horticultural Program, where we were executing the program to lend support to farmers to increase production and productivity. From there, I had a stint doing um, um, EU-funded projects um, for about five years, and from there, I transitioned into the Bureau of Standards, um, where I was responsible for fresh produce and um, had the responsibility to develop what we call good agricultural practices, which is a standard, a fresh produce standard that is benchmarked against global gap. Um, from from the Bureau of Standards, I, I, I moved to the Ministry of Tourism as Chief Technical Officer. I spent some time there. I went there during the same year of Hurricane Maria, 2017. So I was baptized by fire and, and had the responsibility to get out the PS that time and PS Karen Prevo to ensure that we could, you know, get back the sector back on its feet, working closely with DDA and, and the minister during that time. I transitioned from CTU to the permanent secretary of tourism, spent a while there, and then transferred to the Ministry of Public Works as permanent secretary as well. And um, in 2022, I went into politics. So now I am the part of the cottage constituency. So while I'm there, I want to say good night to my constituents um, from Cottage. Lovely people, kind people, nice people, patient people. I just want to say a very good night to them. And I hope they're locked in listening to this program. I think they are because they are farmers and they are fishers. Oh, definitely. And yeah. processors, so the full gamut. Yeah. But do you consider yourself a farmer? Oh, I am. I am. I am a, a farmer. Um, I wish I could say I was a full-time farmer, but I'm, I'm a farmer. Um, for over 20 years, I, I practice farming. I don't really have the time like before, so I have persons employed on the farm full time, and I love doing this. Um, it's not just for um, the financial rewards, but it's a form of therapy as well. Okay, and um, and and I'm putting it as well to have persons I'm um, getting fully, getting fully employed. Yes. Improvement of their livelihoods, and we know that is really key to you and your existence. But you mentioned all the other sectors, but I was thinking in my head churning that um it still leads to agriculture. Even if you had a um, bureau of standards. Yes, everything linked. <laughs> everything linked. I'm, I mean, tourism is one of the sectors that, you know, is closely linked to agriculture. As we normally say, the, 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 the more rooms you have is the more food that we sell. You know, so we work closely. And um, once we have a tourism industry that's growing, automatically the agricultural sector will, will grow because you must produce to feed um, the persons that, you, that you're bringing in. And in addition, we have the component of agritourism. You know where we can promote, you know, farm tours, and have tourists having their life experiences um, on farms as well. So, Bureau standards, I was fully involved in in that. that I said I, I developed the Donga program, so it was linked to agriculture as well. So, my entire career spanned across across um, different specialties in in in, in agriculture. Yeah. Yes. Um. When you look at the sector itself, you consider yourself a, a technician slash a farmer. What does the sector really mean to you? Well, for the past 24 years, I've been an agricultural professional and a farmer. So, so I wear both caps, you know, so hence the reason I can identify most times with the challenges that farmers face. Um, not just being a farmer or a, or tech, or, or, or a technician, but it, it really means a lot because that's a practice persons do to gain their livelihoods. You know, I know of many farmers and farm families who are dependent um, on the farm for for the living. So that's why we, we must promote it and protect it. And of course, agriculture has been one of the key pillars of Dominica's economy, contributing significantly to, to GDP um, annually. And um, our whole history and background began with agricultural trade. Um, even in colonial days, where we were doing limes and cocoa and coffee, and in the 80s, where we were huge on bananas, you know, and we have transitioned through so many different crops. So Dominica has been an agricultural economy. Um, so it means a lot, and I think it's something that we must sustain. 
before we continue, I just want to say that we will give persons a chance to call in. For sure. But we're, for the first half an hour, we will go into questions, you know, and just to mm -hmm. give some more information because that's what it is really, Definitely. to give factual information mm -hmm. on the sector and to ensure that people get the accurate information they need to make um, song decisions. So for those of you wanting to call in, just take a note of it. The numbers are one 800 327 Four four eight three two eight one and four four eight three two seven nine. Um, Mr. Minister, we do have you as the Minister of Agriculture, but there are two other ministers who serve with you. We have um, Honorable Julian Defoe mm -hmm. and also um, Honorable Lakia Joseph. Explain to us how this works in your day-to-day -day, um, duties or roles and responsibilities. Yes, um, Honorable Defoe is is the Minister of State with special responsibility for fisheries and the blue economy. That's his background. He's a trained um, um, fisheries officer, qualified in that area, and he and he knows what he's, he's doing. Um, Lakia Joseph, Honorable, she is the, the, the parliamentary secretary responsible for rural enterprises and agro-processing. And again, she's a practicing um, agro-processor. So, so all of us in the ministry have a background in what we are responsible for. And I must say the, the chemistry is there. I mean, the respect is there. We, we work together and we share everything. So basically, th there's, there's no boss at the ministry. We just do what we have to do and work together with the team to get the job done. And I, I can boastfully say we maybe have the best team in, the, in, in public service because of the chemistry and the way we get things done and, and execute our, our program, ably supported I mean, by the PS and, and the other technical staff. Well, that, that, I mean, I see that every day, so that is actually true. I can attest to that. Um, you, when you got in, um, you're almost a one and a half years already. Time flies. Yes. Um, when you got in, we conducted a series of Meet the Farmers tours. Um, we went out to each agricultural region. Mm -hmm. You made that your mission. You told us from the get-go, this is what you wanted to accomplish. You met with the farmers. You saw their situation in terms of their constraints, their profitabilities, etc. So... I know that we said that we would have taken notes and gotten back to the farmers, mm -hmm. the farming groups. Um, how successful have you been with that in terms of um, following through on your promise yes. to get back to the farmers? Yeah, um, we, we, we did the Meet the Farmers tour in, in every region, the seven agricultural regions. The main objective was to really feel the pulse of the sector and to meet farmers, identify the, 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 the concerns and constraints, get recommendations from them, and how we as a government and ministry can assist them, you know, to make their farming practices and their livelihoods um, a bit better. Um, I must say the farmers were very, very receptive um, to us when we did that. In addition to the farm visits, when we went to see the actual practices, we concluded the day with a town hall where we could have a wider cross-section of the community um, to hear our plans and most importantly to hear from them um, the challenges and, and recommendations that they could offer to us as as a ministry. Um, some of the main challenges that we identified when we when we conducted our series of farm visits and, and town house um, were one farm labor was 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 one of the number one issue that they raised. Um, farm access to a certain in, um, to a certain extent. Um, I mean farm um, feeder roads and the cost of inputs. Um, since um, the 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 mid the farmer store um as a ministry we have made progress in tackling some of the some of the issues that they identified but even before that i must say in terms of farm access and and feed the roads um to have them go to the farm comfortable um from since hurricane maria the government itself has invested over 30 million in the rehabilitation and construction of of feed the roads so it's not that that's three zero or one three three zero 30 million eastern carbon dollars in the rehabilitation and or construction of, of farm access so it's not that we were not doing but imagine a lot of feeder roads so we had what we did we did an assessment of all the feeders in dominica and ranked them by parity um and and, and factors we used to rank them would have been number of active farmers um, potential for expansion, um, etc. So we had that ranking and we prioritized the feeder was going going through. Um, so that's what informed investment in a particular location. Um, as we speak, investments are ongoing. Um, we should have 
just concluded the, the feeder road that leads from Pichley um, to, to Belfish Rope. That one feeder road was over $6 million. Um, even in Clifton, in my constituency, we've just concluded a portion of a farm access with over six hundred thousand dollars. You know, and the list goes on and on and on. So that is one we have on the farm on our front burner to continue investing in. And as I said, we have prioritized them and we tackle them one by one. Um, in addition to that, and we, I mean, we have to understand that investment in roads is not only farm access, but we have main roads. We have other tributaries that government has to give priority to as well. You know, so so I'm just asking the farmers that are still challenged with with farm access still to be a bit patient. We'll get to you um, while we seek the resources and, and invest more um, into farm access. Um, in terms of the cost of inputs, that was a big one in, in most of the meetings that we went through. Not to the fault of government. Um, we all know the issues we face globally with the Ukraine-Russia war. Um, recently, we had the issue... Um, in the Suez Canal, that changed the whole transportation and logistics issue throughout the world. You know, having um, the cost of shipping increase, we, you know, which will all which will be transferred the cost of inputs. Anytime you have war, the cost of petroleum goes up. Fertilizer is a byproduct of it, so automatically the cost of fertilizer will go up as well. You know, so these were all external factors that 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 drove um, up the cost of of inputs and. Um, it was not our fault. So, 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 so the farmers understood. You know, it, it, it's, it, it was more like an imported inflation, one for better term, and and what we did, we we tried to assist them by providing um free inputs to them. So what happened in December last year, um, we received a consignment of fertilizer from from Morocco, over five thousand bags, and um we were able to supply most of our commercial farmers with that, to sort of ease up. Um, the, the pressure that they were facing in terms of cost of inputs. And um, well, I'm happy now the, 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 the price have reduced significantly. Um, it was about $115 a bag up to $120 a bag. Um, last year now you can get a bag for $75, $80. You know, so that I've um, um, abated a bit. You know, so very happy for that. Um, in terms of farm labor, I think that's one of the biggest challenges that we faced um, in the sector. Um, every real farmer, any commercial farmer, you 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 will speak to you know they will tell you that they have issues with farm labor since um we form a committee um at um in um, um chaired by the ps of of um agriculture where we have other um persons in critical position in the public service such as immigration um the ministry of labor legal affairs and some of the foreign affairs some of the key ministries that's that and they put together what we call a farm labor policy um, which we could make reference to to see how we can solve that that farm, farm, farm labor issue. Um, from what I've seen so far, um, we are looking at a free prong approach. Um, of course, we must speak to the immigrant labor. Um, most of our immigrant labor came from our sister island of, of Haiti, and um, they really contributed significantly to, towards that before. But we've been losing them um, for the past months and, and year two. Um, they've been you know, traveling to other countries, so we've been losing that that part of it. And um, so that's one. So the intention is to have a structured immigrant labor. Not necessarily persons from our sister island from Haiti, but it could be from anywhere in the region in the world that we can attract from labor. So modeled on the Canadian apple harvesting program, we're looking at something similar to implement that you're going to come, but you're going to come as somebody who has experience, in, 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 in working on farms and not just somebody to come for a free ride. You know, we are recommending to have a special um, visa um, for that particular purpose and other, you know, re recommendations that the committee has put together for that particular one. Um, the other intervention that we're looking, like, we are looking at to, to solve that issue of farm labor is mechanization. Although our topography is not quite conducive for mechanization, but there are pockets of, of areas in the country that can be mechanized, and there are small implements that can be used to work certain portions of our therein. So it's something the ministry have been um, promoting, small tools, equipment to at least get the land prepared and to extend that service to, to farmers. Um, as, I'm, as I'm on that, we already start putting 
actions in place for that. Sometime later this year, we'll, we'll be receiving a consignment from the Chinese, the Republic, the People's Republic of China, um, about 30 or 40 new implements um, that will be able to assist us in land preparation. And we will have them positions in different locations on the island, so they'll be easily accessible to farmers um, um, for that. You know, and the last one, um, because it's a free pong approach um, from what I've seen, is what we can term as a labor entrepreneurship, um, where we as a ministry or a department can engage young persons, equip them with the tools, the chainsaws, the, the, the postal leaguers, whatever tools that they require to work on the farm, and go out and provide that service to farmers at a cost. So if a farmer in Vicars says that he needs a week work to clear a portion of land, they can call a particular department and say, I need services of your team and they'll be on your farm to do that, but at a cost. You know, so it's just to make the labor a bit more available. But we need men that are trained. First, they'll be trained, um, available and willing to do that, that kind of task. You know, so that's one other strategy that we're looking to see how we can um, solve the farm labor issue going forward. So revisiting the issue of um, mechanization and implements, I know that the ladies out there may be saying, but can am I will I be able to utilize um, some sort of equipment, you know, heavy? Of, of course. Okay. Of course. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. remember, we have power tailors, we have rotovators, we have different sizes that women can operate. I've, I've, I've seen them in action, Petra. You know, so don't trust the women farmers, you know, sometimes they carry more than men. <laughs> so, so don't trust them at all. Yeah, they, they are... They are tools that they can they can use to make life easier for them, for sure. Mm -hmm. I have to ensure that the women farmers know that I'm on <laughs> their side. Um, sometimes we we hear so many things. You mentioned the task force. I know they had weekly meetings in labor, etc. And sometimes we hear the cry of farmers and like you know, what does the, is the government doing? Petra, the government this, the government that. But do you consider agriculture to be subsidized in Dominica? Heavily, heavily. Um, sometimes when I sit in regional meetings and I and I present and, and say the the interventions and programs government have to support farmers. Um, and people sometimes, you know, really ask me, you know, is that real? I'm telling you. For example, all agricultural inputs come in Dominica duty free. All. We have many of them too that are zero VAT rated for sure. Last year we added one to that schedule for the zero VAT rated I think it was Pitmas, the, 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 the promix we added. So the list continues to grow. Um, one of the most important and most visible um, concession I think everybody will be aware of is when you see the FA on a vehicle. Of the FA. Um, although recently we have tightened on how we, how we, how we um, approve the FA because we really want persons to really you know really show that they are farming so we have reviewed some of the some of our of our requirements for fa's to ensure that the persons that are given that concession really deserve it and, and worth it i think in 2003 it fiscal year 2022 2023 um uh, the value of that concession was about eight hundred thousand dollars um these are monies we expect that the farmers would have put into the farm because it's a concession, you know? So so that too um, um, is, is a concession that's that's provided. A simple example picture I can make on concession again. The cost of producing a citrus seedling at the production stations or, or avocado seedling is about $25 EC, sometimes 30 And it is being sold at $15. So on one plant, you you see the among government is absorbing. And ten or more of ten dollars. And ten or more, you pay ten dollars. You know, so that again is an example of a subsidy. I mean, the many grants we have been given. I mean, farmers, every disaster that will pass, they will be supported with small grants to invest in the farm to make sure that they bounce back quickly. Um, recently, we we have launched our agro processing um, program grants program where farmers can get grant up to, or agro-processors, one for better term, can get up to $40,000. I mean, isn't that a subsidy? I mean, yes, it is. And, of course, ever so often, we provide free inputs. I just said recently, we, 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 we distributed over 5,000 bags of 
for fertilizer. Even the farmers that go burning on plantains, the spray, um, the, 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 the oil they use for spray, the fungicides, and in and, and addition to that, we pay the labor for the teams that go out to spray um, to control black cicatoka. Um, in addition as well, um, if a farmer needs a few trees of seedlings and is a very productive, vegetable farmer, he can get these things free from the Agricultural Technical Mission at One Mile. Um, persons who want to cover the greenhouse days, we can assist them in providing greenhouse plastic. And the list goes on and on, Peshaw. If you value all that, you can agree with me that agriculture is heavily subsidized in, in Dominica. So I want to put you on this spot and say, so why is that not re being reflected? You know, general public, you still hear farmers are crying. And we do understand farming is hard, you know. It is. And especially these days during the car right now. Mm -hmm. But what do you really think? I want to put you on this spot. Tell me if you had to speak to a farmer now, what would you say to them? I would say the same thing. I actually, I, I just came from a meeting from um, Anna's Demi Benz with some farmers a while ago with my colleague, um, Lakia. And um, the question came up as well, as you're asking me, you know. So I had to explain to them that, you know, farming is a business. I mean, we appreciate the farmers' efforts and the need for farmers to ensure that we have our food security. But we need to take it a little more serious. And if you invest in, you invest in a farm as a business. The government will do its part to support you, but um, you have to take it more as a business. You know, and um, if I even have to extend, I mean, the, the what we are doing picture for farmers is not just on the production level only, you would know. Because as I said earlier, we're looking at the entire agri-food system from production to market. And the is doing a wonderful job in ensuring that what the farmers produce will sell. And recently, you would have known of the procurement facility that we've provided $5 million Dexia has in the coffers to pay farmers within 48 hours. That's unprecedented. I mean, no any region has that model. You know, so you know, so so we are doing a lot, and the farmers know we are doing a lot, but the farmers are so used to the subsidies that we are willing to assist when we can, but I think the farmers understand. They, they, they understand... About this, and, and most farmers, I must say, are taking the thing seriously. And the most we can do the ministry is to encourage them to continue investing in agriculture. We will get back to that because, I mean, these are really significant strides we've made. And um, in terms of the farmers themselves benefiting directly, the processors. Mm -hmm. So we have a whole section on that. Um, we want to take a little break, but I want to ask you a question before we do. Um, you just um, returned uh, well, a couple of weeks now from the FAO sub-regional meeting. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people say, but what is in it for us? Why does the mm -hmm. minister need to attend? Um, why does he need to meet with, you know, someone who's maybe doing better mm -hmm. or some mm -hmm. other organization? Um, what, what really is in it for us when um, Dominica is mm -hmm. represented at these um, forums and sessions? Yeah, this, that meeting was, was, was very important that we, that we attend. So I attended um, together with the permanent secretary, um, Mr. Renan Slim, to that meeting. At that meeting, we had to agree on certain um, um, measures going forward as well as to FAO assistance to us as a block. So it was for ministers of um, what we call CELAC, that is the Latin American countries, and, and CARICOM. We, we met in Ghana for a few days, deliberating on how better FAO can assist us. And we had to finalize that, that assistance report. And um, if you are not there as a country to pitch um, your, your, what, what you need, um, you may just lose out. And as a block as CARICOM, we have our... our, our priorities and the Latin American countries would, would have the priorities as well. So we have to go in numbers to see how we can assist um, in getting what we need on that FAO assistance um, coming in, in, in the next term coming up. In addition to that, but what stood out though um, was, was the call for the greater use of source of cooperation. Um, we have a lot of Latin American countries that are advanced in agricultural technologies. Um, we're talking about Brazil, we're talking about Argentina, we're talking about Chile. It's very advanced in livestock production and other commercial crops. And um, we're saying many times we leave the, the, the block itself and go far looking looking for support. But right there in our own block in Silac, we have countries that can lend support to us, you know, to enhance our production and productivity by sharing some of the technologies. You know, it could be in livestock production, it could be in crop production, you know, whatever um, 
aspect of agriculture it is present in our block so there was a call from caricom um ministers how fao can assist us in strengthening that source of cooperation going forward and i think every country in caricom spoke to that and 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 the countries of Latin america will, they were very receptive as well so so going forward fao um, promised that they will assist us in building that bridge and what technologies that we can best better benefit from from your latin american countries so so that stood out and of course you do networking as a minister in this kind of forums bilaterally as well you know so it was helpful i mean left dissatisfied with some contacts that we can follow up on for example our trick up expansion program you know i had the opportunity to speak to the ministers and the other senior persons from mexico you know and, and chile you know and argentina you know and of course our very good friends that always assist us the, the, the cubans you know to speak with them one-on-one -on -one to see how we can further strengthen our agricultural cooperation sorry i forgot to pull up my mic in terms of caricom itself um um are you holding any responsibilities right now as minister of agriculture i was the chair of oecs council of agricultural ministers and but i handed over in november to Grenada. So um, Comrade Grant would have taken up that post in the November before. And um, when we, when I was given the responsibility, I carried through. So for the greater part of 2023, I serve as the chair of the Council of Ministers for the OECS. Yes. Okay. Um, we want to really, I, I know we said we'll take a break, but we have so many things to discuss and talk about because I really had my series of questions, but I'm getting some more questions in my mind as we go on. Minister, you also mentioned that um, you, in terms of assistance to farmers, they be, in terms of the farm labor issue and um, having gangs, having groups of people, you know, to assist the farmer and a set schedule to organize and complete a task. But we look at the age of a farmer right now. Mm -hmm. This is futuristic and near future, I'm hoping. But the age of a farmer right now, what are we doing to get young entrants into the industry, to excite them, to motivate them? Mm -hmm. Is that something that you see in the foreseeable future? Because, you know, fishers are very young. Yeah. We see fishers yeah. um, going into the um, basic fisherman's training course from 1920, and they mm -hmm. already have been fishing, and you're like, whoa. So what are you doing? What is the ministry's position when it comes to exciting, inviting younger groups of people mm -hmm. into the industry? Very good question. And, um, um, and Petra, the average age of a farmer is around 65 years in Dominica. You know, so, so that's a little worrisome right there. Um, if I just track back a bit, um, in 2003, um, when, when, when I was a young extensionist, um, we launched what we call NIA, National Association of Youth in Agriculture. Um, Naya lasted very vibrant for about 12 years after that, and then, you know, took a dive um, without any continuity when persons like myself and Malcolm Wallace and the Delroys and the other person, you know, transitions to... Um, you all started getting old. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and Reggie Savre and Mara Abraham and the list goes on. You know, when we transitioned into other things, um, I suspect we didn't have a, a continuity plan right there. So when I became minister, that was one of my one of my priorities, being a young person myself. I'm not under 35, but I, co I consider myself a young farmer. Um to relaunch Naya because Naya had a purpose and Naya had an impact um, during that time. So last year, March, March 30th um, of, of last year, we had a, a very nice relaunch um, of Naya at the, at the State House um, where we brought young persons together, um, but with a different twist. So we say it was more an entrepreneurship component to Naya where we're going to encourage young professionals, um, young farmers to really invest um, into farming. Since it have took off, I think sometime um, on Tuesday they had a meeting with with young farmers from the different agricultural regions. Um, Honorable Lucky Joseph is the one leading that, and I think with that crop of persons that we have, we can put a good solid program in place um, to really change the whole landscape of farming in Dominica as it pertains to the age of a farmer. We prefer that the plan and the recommendations for the work program come from them then we as a ministry impose something for them to implement. You know, so waiting for them to submit that so we can incorporate in our 
you know, um, budget submission for fiscal year 2025, 2024, 2025. In addition to that, one of the things that we identify um, is at the primary school level, there's a structured agricultural program um, to say you're actually teaching theoretical agriculture or even practical agriculture. There are some primary schools, though, that expose the young kids to, um, the young students to, to practical agriculture. They have the school garden, they do the stuff, and they're kind of excited. In the secondary schools, we have some schools that are taking the lead, like the North is Comprehensive, um, Postman Secondary, actually doing practical agriculture. But we are not satisfied. So recently we have, we have concluded, well, we are still doing uh, uh, an audit as to the state of, of practical agriculture at the different levels, primary and secondary, to inform a program we are going to launch pretty soon in, 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 in this new term. Um, so we're going to launch a school and agriculture competition at the primary level. Um, so every school who has land, who has injuries, will take part. At the end of the term, we'll award the best school as it, re as it pertains to practical agriculture. And we're going to do the same for the secondary schools as well. To give them some incentive, you know, to, to stick to it and to partake in any activities as it, as it pertains to agriculture. In addition... Um, when I served as the chair of um, agriculture ministers of OECS, I'm seeing that I um, youth and agriculture is one of my passion, and it was on the front burner um, in Dominica. The time I took it on, I introduced that concept to um, the OECS Council of, of Agricultural Ministers, where we can have a agricultural symposium for 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 young farmers, and. Um, I'm just happy to report that um, cabinet, has, cabinet has approved that we host the first one um, sometime this year, June, July this year, where we'll have young farmers from the OECS um, coming to Dominica in droves to spend three days with us to have different lectures and talks and, and, and site visits, um, exhibition, um, um, you know, and, and a nice symposium where we bring them together where we can network, share knowledge, so that we can encourage young persons to take part, success stories. And, I, and in that particular week, we, we, will, we will recognize the person who won the award for the OECS Agriculture, Youth in Agriculture, um, for 2024 as well. So that's in the making. Um, we're hoping that the committee that committee has approved can meet, can meet very soon to fine-tune the planning. We're working closely with the OECS Commission on that. We are seeking the funding mostly externally for that, and we're looking forward to that as well. So it's at no cost to us, and we still have little our young cost, people. Little cost. Once you're hosting, yeah. there's something well, that you Well, yeah, but negligible. Yeah, yeah. And our young people yeah. can actually meet their counterparts and yes. share ideas, information, network. Yes. Yes. So that is really key. That is really yes. key. Because yes. we all do almost the same crops. Yes. So actually, that's exciting. The, the commission has already secured um, 50,000 euros to put towards towards that event that will take care of overseas travel and accommodation and the like. And we have support from ICA, um, FAO, WUS, and PI. SLM so far. So I really want to tell young people who are into farming, etc. Just speak with your officer and see how you can be a part of that. Yes. You might Excited not. Stuff. So yes, soon we'll be right. sending out the save the date. Very okay. soon. Great, great, great. Yes. One of the things though is that young farmers may say that they need access. Mm -hmm. Access to credit, access mm -hmm. to lands, mm -hmm. access to technical advice. Um, how do you plan to how are the plans going in terms of right. tackling these things and, and, mm -hmm. and having the young farmers right. have have access to these things on the level where they can actually yeah. achieve? Right. Mm -hmm. So all, all facilities that are available for farming, they are also available for young persons in, in agriculture as well. I can speak to the $28 million that the government has um, placed at the aid bank for, for, for agribusiness, which includes farming agriculture at 3% interest rate. You know, so, so so that's available. And one may say the young person may not have the collateral security to do that, but a bank is accumulative and there are ways in which, you know, the persons, young persons can take advantage um, of that facility. But one of our policies that we have instituted at the ministry level, any program we have to benefit um, farmers in general, we want to ensure at least 25 or 30% is targeted to, to young persons. We want more, but minimum, to just ensure that the young persons benefit from that. And that includes women as well. 
So yes. just to reiterate, you're saying that any program we have, any program, without even us discussing it or talking about with it, with incentives, yes, th mm -hmm. this is really incorporated into the program. Yes, definitely. So young yes. people who have to wonder if I am involved, if they have included no. me. No, that's mm -hmm. the ministry's policy going going forward. That's the way we can encourage and support the National Association of of Ifinari Culture. Actually, last budget government has placed on the budget one million dollars just to support young persons in agriculture, and 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 they have been, they are you know. They have been getting that that kind of support as well. Yes. So I'll have you speak in a little while. So I will take we'll take a short break just to just um to get your just um and change the topic, mm -hmm. change subjects while we come back. So do stay tuned for that. Sure. Those people who say, um, want to call our listeners who may want to call, the numbers to call are one eight hundred three two seven four four eight three two eight one four four eight three two seven nine. Um, in terms of the listeners, I'm um, wanting to really engage with the minister and really get some one-on-one um, -on -one time with him. I know that he has an open-door policy, but right now you're right there live with him in studios and you can have some sort of rapport discussion with the minister. So um, we'll take a break and we'll be back in one minute. Okay, Mr. Minister, we said we would take a break, but um, some of the, I think I need to maybe just get some clearance from tech. So if they're hearing me now, they can uh, come and assist us. We also mentioned that um, the roadmap for agriculture includes policy, includes meetings, sessions. I know people say that we're always in meetings, we're always in trainings. Um, in terms of our policy for agriculture, the roadmap. We spoke about Dominica being climate resilience, and we will get to the, um, in terms of the money, the 700 million by 2030, etc. We have some time for that. But in terms of the agricultural policy, you did mention one thing in terms of the young people, but broader now, um, we should have mentioned that on the onset, and I do apologize. In terms of the policy for agriculture, I have really looked at that as a document, as a living document, when it comes to guiding us and, and setting the tone for, for the sector? Um, and there are many, many strategies. Um, the, the last we've worked on was the agricultural transformation strategy where we incorporated the need to meet our targets of 700 million contribution of agriculture to GDP by, by 2030. You know, so there are many, many interventions and, and, and key pillars um, in that strategy that we are working towards too. You know, so that would encompass stuff like investing heavily um, in, in youth, in agriculture, youth participation in, in agriculture. It will include um, stuff like um, expansion and increased production and productivity on farms. We'll, we'll answer about to that. It also includes um, research and development, which we think is a key, key pillar um, for for agriculture and something that have been overlooked many times, but without the science involved in agriculture, we will not know exactly how to move forward. And of course, it includes the blue economy as well, um, being part, you know, part of the entire scheme of things. You know, so we have a lot of pillars that we have outlined in this strategic document in order for us to meet our goal um, by 2030. We had the policy before, but we had to rework some of the interventions you know, seeing that we now have that mandate to meet our targets. And we've come to the, you know, oh, we do have a caller, Mr. Minister, so let us just take that. Hello? Hello? Y yes, good night. Yeah, good evening. Now, the problem, we're talking agriculture. Now, agriculture in Dominica, you know, we haven't got vast lands and flats and like Guyana and the other country. Now we have a problem again, even with animal feed. How are we going to address that situation? No, I believe well people like um, bigger countries like Guatemala and those places there, the Dominica, St. Lucia, Grenada, and those other countries can come together, and uh, the government in Guatemala, them places can. We can have all like a thousand or more acres of land to two thousand <coughs> acres of land. 
So we from that we found corn, soya beans, and mm. we just put it down, finish it in containers, and we manufacture it here, process it here. It will be more better and more competitive to the farmers and so forth. No land. As we know, the state haven't got land as such, and the state's supposed to have a land bank. They find foreigners purchasing land. When they purchase the land, they will not sell back the land to the citizens. Then we have a problem there. And if we don't address that situation, we like upper fight and anti upper fight. Then they're free. As a farmer, you're supposed to have irrigation water, livestock. We can buy spring water for animals mm-hmm. to drink. Then we have our food. That should not supposed to be in season because of the drought that is happening. We're supposed to have food consecutively. Now a farmer with three acres or more supposed to have a house on the estate. You cannot be living um La Rose and going back up down every day. You cannot be living La mm-hmm. and going to Cas a Bruce and Wood. You have to have a house where you can dwell and proper access. No, the problem is what we have to do is not only talking about agriculture. We must learn to tell the people that the youth do you have to nature the plants, you have to love your garden, you have to lo- it's not doing half and run on the block. Not doing half and when your government have holiday, everybody going on the beach and I don't like turtle. No. You have to spend time in your garden. You have to be devoted. Mm-hmm. So not only saying yes agriculture, whatever they do, if they don't agree to do it, it will be this agriculture, it will disagree with them. So the fact is the with eyes the government must talk to people and you see sometimes the people that when they have programs that call in, to be honest is congratulations. Business is business, congratulations, congratulations. I believe more have to be done. More assistance have to be done. We don't have to have one tank we're supposed to put on a tank for agriculture on the other side. We are not playing. We are doing something. We have to do something with sustainably sustainability, viability, quantity and quality. If we don't have those things we'll never thrive. We have to have proper boat to bring or um, tra- air transport or sea transport to make sure that food reach in quick at a quick time. So it's not only and look at it at the price of that we are purchasing the food from the people because we can't afford to throw things for nothing. And when you get other things that come down from here, it's expensive, and we sell in own cheap like we are Jesus Christ, Mr. Goodman. So we have to make sure everybody end of the exercise, everyone is happy. No one rob nobody, and no one is dishonest to nobody. And the farmers will be laughing. Now, how many times are we going to see a farmer going to work with a dirty clothes on him? He can't even buy a bicycle. And other countries, they have their big transport home and everybody running. We have, we're not looking to be rich, but we have to do something that we can get returns of our hard labor. So I believe it is more than what we believe. It's wider than what we believe. Let us do our best to see how we can make things work. I thank you, brother. Thank, well, thank you, you very much for that call. Um, Mr. Minister, a couple of points you raised. Yes, yes, yes. We um, have other callers, but you can go ahead. Yes, and, yeah. yes. Thank you for that call. I think you made a few salient points there. Um, in terms of irrigation, it's mm. something that is not questionable. Um, in order for us to be <laughs> to increase production and productivity on farm, we must invest in irrigation. With the impact of climate change now, Petra, and the climate variabilities that we are experiencing daily, extended drought periods, um, so to speak. We need to invest in irrigation, and we have been doing so. The government has spent millions in, in investing in, in irrigation system um, in different parts of the island. Um, as we speak, um, on the one of our projects funded by the, funded by the World Bank, um, we, we, we do offer that. Um, a, a couple months ago, um, picture, we had a call, an expectation of increase out for farmers to actually um, express their interest if they'll be interested in having irrigation on the farm, on the farms, that small units, um, and also for 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 greenhouse rehabilitation as well, I think the numbers that we received um, were not what we were expecting, and I think the 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 officers now are reviewing and are doing the validation on farms now um, to inform designs to invest in irrigation on farms. So I agree with him for that. If we do not invest in irrigation on farm and protective agriculture. Um, to produce short-term crops like vegetables, we will not meet the target set. That's a must because of the dreadful impacts um, of of climate change. Um, animal feed, I'm happy he he brought it up. Um, this is 
on our cards and which we are giving parity as we speak we are just finalizing documents so that we could go to to tender for um the procurement of that animal seed facility that he's, he he made mention to um which we will install um by the end of the year toward the first quarter of 2025 um i myself i'm a big advocate for that i know that is going to significantly reduce the cost of feed um, um on island and based on what we have seen the numbers that we have worked so far it will reduce the cost of feed by at least 40 to 60 percent with us investing in an animal feed plant um so that's on the cards and i'm very excited about this one i'm hoping to see that come to fruition i'm i'm pretty soon transportation um i'm, I'm happy you raise it because we are constructing an international airport sometime when we whole conversation around the airport we only think of tourism and moving people but the impact that is going to have on agriculture you know will be huge um i can tell you with with investment of the international airport in st vincent that have increased the export of fresh produce seven folds and i can see us doing more than that imagine a farmer from salisbury harvesting 10 crits of, of tomatoes and having that reach in Miami the same day. Or lovely bell peppers. Or lovely bell peppers through our international airport. You know, so farmers need to claim and own the airport as well. Okay? So, transportation, we are working on as well. And in, in addition to that, not too long I was telling some of my colleagues, um, in recent times, that in Portsmouth on the harbor at Longhouse, I think... In terms of number of, of schooner vessels, I think that's the period we have seen the most schooner vessels in Portsmouth. And guys are still purchasing, you know, moving fresh produce weekly um, north of the north of the island. You know, so persons are investing in transportation. And as I said, I'll, I'll reiterate, the airport is going to make a huge impact for farmers um, up, up on completion. So, so we need to take advantage of those investments that government are making. We do have another caller, so let's go to the phones again. Hello, good night. You're on to Agri Action. Hello. Hello. I'm not hearing the call. Hello, can you hear me, caller? Hello. You've lost the caller, Petra. <laughs> no, the caller is right there, you know. We have a number of calls, you just don't know. We've had about seven, eight calls oh, wow. that I had to keep on hold while you were discussing. Okay, so um, one of the things that the caller mentioned was um, lands. Yes. So, yes, you want to just tackle that for him? Yes, um, and, and that question comes up every time we have a tongue or, or, we, or, we, or we meet farmers. Um, government has agricultural lands, and I know government is willing to, to lease agricultural lands to persons who are interested in farming. So, so access to land can be solved easily, with the persons expressing interest um, in wanting land to, to lease. And we have lands in very suitable um, zones, in su very suitable agro-eco zones that is very conducive for farming. So if somebody is interested in farming, I would encourage them to go to the land and service and division, express interest, and they too can advise us to the location where we have lands available for lease. And I know the government will be happy to, to lease to farmers um, lands so, that, that, so we can increase production on island, for sure. Hello? Hello? Hi, good night. There's a caller. Yes, good night, good night. Calling from the rooftop garden out here in Southern Park. My friend, my constituents, yes, how are you? What's that? How are you doing? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. All I'm seeing in the rooftop garden is green, green, gold. How are you surviving the heat on, on the rooftop? You, you, you broke up a little bit. I'm saying, how are you coping with the heat on the rooftop? The sun? Oh, no, man. The sun, I mean, I'm covered. Great stuff. I'm covered, so the sun is not really affecting me that much. The wind, the wind is affecting me. But I want to make a quick, quick, quickly. Um, um, I've been doing this for the past, let's say, 15 years. And I returned to Dominica. And I'm finding that there is a serious therapy, therapy, okay, from just doing the farming, doing the planting. Just want to ask you, you've been in farming for a while. What do you think? And I do not believe that the therapeutic part of farming is stressed enough. 
I mean, I think farmers are the most less stressed people in Dominica. Yes, and I agree totally. I believe, I believe also the public should know, or have an understanding, or, you know, at least get some information as to how to relieve your stress. I say to relieve your stress, plant a garden. Whether it's a flower garden, a vegetable garden, or whatever, plant a garden. Because in this high stress environment, we all need relief. And um, you know, I will I will support that. Plant a garden, spend time in there, and you will see how fast your stress will decrease to a bare minimum. Thanks for the information, my brother. You're right on point. Thank and you. so keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Rooftop. Thank, thank you, yeah. Thank you. thank you so much. I'll, I'll add natural therapy. Um, 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 rooftop, <laughs> rooftop, man. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 really therapeutic. You know, when you when you on the farm. Yeah. You did mention the schooners being on at on the north in terms of um the Huxley trade, etc. Have we resumed post hurricane Maria though? Has our north trade really resumed as we would like it? Of course, of course. Um, I'm 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 sure, and the numbers would show that. Um. Pre Hurricane Maria, um, agriculture contributed about two hundred and forty seven million dollars to, to GDP. Um at the end of 2022, 2023, um agriculture contributes now about two hundred and seventy four million. You know, so so we have even surpassed the pre Maria contribution to GDP in terms of agricultural production, contribution to GDP. You know, so that's evident that we have resumed trade. And we could not do it only with local consumption. We have risen trade. And um, the demand has been growing. The demand is high. And we cannot meet the demands that we're expecting. Um, that that The demands that we're getting through Dexia and, and, and through the private exporters. We have another caller on the line. Hello, good evening. Caller. Hello, good night. Good night, ma'am. I'm listening to you all about agriculture. Now, if you have a backyard garden and somebody else cutting down all your food, all your bananas, everything. You keep telling the, the neighbor, don't cut down my food. Don't destroy my food because I am selling my food. That's how I do my living. And that garden is there, well, call it about 40 years now. And it's only now everybody seeing the land and they just cutting down my food and I don't know where to go again when I went to housing, I went to the police. They told me go to housing, I went. But that neighbor, he just not listening. He cutting down, cutting down, cutting down. If you see the place, you never say they had a nice garden. Okay, is that the caller from Kings Hill? Mon Bruce. Mon Bruce, okay. Yes. Um, I will call you off air after the program. Because it's bigger than just the ministry itself at this point, yes? Huh? And we will call you after the program to get some more information from you, okay? Please do yes. that for me, please. Okay, no problem. Thank you very yes. much. have a good night. Have a good night. God bless. We have another caller. We seem to have lost that caller. So, Minister, we were mentioning in terms of the GDP being at $274 million, sorry, dollars. Let me see if I get that caller. Hello? Okay, no. So we will looking at that, and um, we know that we heard the Prime Minister's pronouncement, and we've been working to that, and the general public would have heard that, that we're looking at $700 million mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. agriculture's <laughs> contribution by 2030. We have six more years, give or take a couple mm -hmm. months. Um, do you see that as being achievable? And how would we go about doing that? Yeah, Petra, to, to begin, the 274 is what is recorded. Okay, what is recorded. Let me give you one example of that. We have fresh produce boxes that the traders use to export the fresh produce, which sometimes would hold or should hold 45, 50, 40 um, pounds per box as yeah. per standard. What we are seeing is that the boxes are overpacked, okay? 
Um, and when it's weighed, you, you'll get 75, 80, sometimes even 90 pounds per box. And do the country, the receiving country, accept that yes, as it is? Yes, yes. Oh. But what is recorded is the actual, not the actual, but the weight the box is supposed to contain. So if it's a 45 pound box, statistics or whoever's taking the record would say it's 45 pound box. But the additional 40 or 50 pounds that's in put it in the box is not recorded. Um, PM always says there are persons that do agro processing, you know, at the cottage level. And, you know, they would ship to Martinique and Guadeloupe and St. Martin through their suitcases. The processed commodities, which, which is not being recorded as agricultural contribution, it's a living, nobody knows. You know, so, so there are some exports that we are not capturing. And if we put systems in place properly to capture that, um, we'll be higher than where we are. That is one. Number two, the demand for agricultural produce is very high now, as we speak. Very, very high. Um, for example, I know Barbados is, requires at least a thousand boxes of bananas every week. We cannot supply that. How many, how many boxes 1, of bananas? 1,000. 1, 1, weekly. So that's one what, buyer in Barbados. One buyer. Yes, we cannot supply that. One buyer in Antigua, that's the young lady who does the, 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 the planting trips, requires, I think, 400 boxes of plantings a fortnight. We cannot meet that. I know Dexia has contacts and arrangements in Miami and the UK to export at least at least a container of dashing each every fortnight. We cannot. And the list goes on. We annually, just from Postmouth, we export about $5 million in value of plantains. And Dexia would have at least a two or three million dollars that they cannot fulfill. So I'm saying that too, so the demand is there. So once we establish, we plant, we have no issues to sell, we will sell. And in addition, the Pokemon factor is right there to pay farmers on time. So the demand is there. So that's a factor in which we can assist us doing that. And investment that we are making in agriculture now can propel us. When come for livestock, pork and poultry, we import annually around twenty million dollars worth of chicken and pork. With our investment in the abattoir and on the interventions we're making, I think if we have time, we'll go into it in depth. Um, in resilient pens, we're expecting that we're going to chew in into that, and at least if every year or two we reduce by five million, you know we'll get there. Um, the contribution to GDP also speak to fisheries as well. It's not only plants and things, it's because of fisheries as well. So we have co um, percentages as assigned to fisheries. Okay? So, and as I said, we have addressed most of the links, if not all, in the whole value chain that makes up that agri-food system that government now is strategically investing in. So once it's done properly, have everything equal, no more maria, no more storm. <laughs> we invest in technology, um, you know, the hydroponics, we expand our aquaculture, we going to sheltered agriculture um, to, 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 um, to adapt against the impacts of, of, of climate change, I think it is possible. And to crown that, when it comes to market, I'll say again, we have the international airport coming on the stream that will give us greater access to the world in exporting our fresh produce. But Mr. Minister, when you look at the statistics, I mean, I felt a way when you said these things. Yeah. You're saying a thousand boxes of bananas to Barbados. Yeah. And we are not able to meet that. We are not able to meet that. 400 pounds of plantains. Yep. And we, 400 boxes, sorry. Yeah. Which is 40 times 400. Mm -hmm. And we're yeah. not able and to meet that. How do you feel? Th that is Dexia's statistics, eh? That doesn't mean that we, we're not exporting more than that. Yes, of I'm course, just saying yes. that is just demands that are there that we can fulfill once we have the crop um, through, um, through, through, through the next year. But it doesn't mean that the hawks are not moving more than that. They're moving much more than that yes. on a daily basis. But, you know, these are gaps that we can, we can fill, markets that we can attend to and can increase and, and can increase the contribution as well. So why are we not able to export these bananas to Barbados or any other country who demands it from us? Yeah, well, that's what we know. So, so, so that's why we are putting systems in place. As we speak, we invest in, in the expansion of plantains and mm -hmm. bananas. Mm -hmm. You would know of 
we have imported recently um, 15,000 tissue culture planting plants, um, which is clean and free from pests and disease, and have some level of tolerance to the black sekatoka, which has ravaged um, the planting and banana subsector. Um, they are now at our one mile agricultural station where they're being hardened and transferred to pots so we can um, distribute to farmers that produce, um, that supply Dexia and, and, and other markets. Um, we are going to receive 45,000 tissue culture banana plants as well. In tranches of 15,000 with six with intervals, we should re receive the first shipment next week if I'm not mistaken. And these are going to be sold to the farmers? Uh, this, no, just on the uh, special programs, we are going to provide to commercial farmers for free. So these are all incentives which I'm telling you that the government is giving to farmers, which is unprecedented. You know, that's what the government is doing to each other. You know, so we have identified that, that huge gap. Although we have our challenges with Black Sekatoga, but we have identified that, that, that demand. So we have brought in clean planting material to see how we can bridge that gap. In addition, we are basically modifying and remodeling the way in which we treat um, Black Sekatoka. Um, because the current model, for me, it's not effective enough. Um, so we are going along the route where we're going to empower farmers, get them mist blowers, um, make the, the, the spray oil and the fungicides a bit more accessible to them. So we are going to put distribution hubs in different localities in the island that are heavy on the cultivation of banana plantains so they can have it easily accessible. And we wouldn't be able to buy a mist blower for every farmer. So what we're going to do in different agricultural regions, we are going to position mist blowers um, so farmers can go in, at least for a day, spray their, their fields for the management of black sugar return, and also postal diggers as well to assist in farm labor. Um, for example, if you were to hire a man to dig planting holes or banner holes for you, um, for a day, he may give you 50 holes. But with the postal digger, you can dig 200 holes. You know? You know, so these are the kind of investments we're making, targeting the expansion of the planting and banana subsector to meet the market demands I spoke to earlier. You've lost the color, Pesha. Pesha, I, I think your mic is off, though. You don't hear me either? No, me and you. Okay, maybe yeah. my level. So the caller is back. Right. Let's see what we can do. Hello, good evening. No, we lost the caller. Okay, so I, I'm encouraging callers, just bear with me and just give me a call back, please. Okay, so they heard my cry. Hello, good night. I don't know. So I'm hoping that they call back. Um, you hear me quite nicely, yes, right? Yes, I'm hearing you clearly. Okay, um, one of the things you mentioned is the investments in agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, and my question to you is, are these investments affordable? So hydroponics, greenhouse system, you know, some people say I don't have money, but let me just hold that thought. I would really yeah. like to get the callers. Hello, good evening, caller. Mm -hmm. Caller, can you lower the, your radio or your device? Yes. Yes, yes. yes I'm good hearing you. Yes, good night, uh, Miss Petra. Um, and the minister, this is the minister of agriculture, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. good night, sir. Okay, I, I used to be a farmer. I used to export to the UK and also the agriculture, the agriculture farmers, which is more the the hucksters. I used to supply people like Keto Farrer with some bananas, some planting to go to Barbados. I heard you speak that we're importing something like $20, 20 million dollars in poultry and pork. Um, what is our export level? Because right now I cannot leave the farm and I'm going to manufacturing, making local products like oils, cream for mm -hmm. paint. My name is Ronnie, by the way. Um, what, uh, what are we doing? Because I listened to one hawkster from Cali, BC, and she says she have a market in Antigua, but she have, she have got no good boat to move the agriculture out of Dominica to the other Windward Islands. Why is she saying that Vex are not getting enough? But with all your concept as government people, all you always feel that all you have to prepare everything for the visitors to um, to come and accept it, or we're going to bring it to them. But before that, there is plenty we can do because even the government, for the time the government there, at least they were supposed to buy these two boats. Look, look, I think the ferry, the French ferry, is just building a new boat in Norway. 
to accommodate the Caribbean that's going to take something like six transport and four, four to five hundred people. I mean, those are the basic things we have to put in front there, in spite of all the airport. Look at how long we've been looking for the airport. That we're supposed to have a boat or two boats to run the islands because these are the most important things for, for us to export. Even, even, even the small manufacturing people, we haven't got a good export and marketing. Dexter, we don't work. Dexter don't work with us. And everybody's on their own. You've seen the, 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 the people that write in the bananas, like Mr. Austrian, um, Clyde Farrer. Clyde, Clyde Farrer. We, we're, not, we're not embracing them people by even helping to, to, to con- for them to consume some of the things. We have all the tourists there, but when the tourists go in the gardens, they cannot eat a banana from Dominica. And that is all we're supposed to be consuming our goods. And I find sometimes, I, I don't know how much again to talk, because sometimes I, to me it doesn't make sense to talk to the, to the people in authority. To me, they don't listen to the grassroots people, the people that involve. They don't take on nobody, and it's just doing on their own. You, you know, even if you're a politician, you have to come on the ground and listen to the ordinary people. That's where you get your feedback. But I just want to tell you, you, you seem like you just come in the government, but keep doing what you're doing. And you're supposed to remember the people that put you in power, the people that vote for you, so that you, know, you can uplift the standard of living. And I, I get in old and I get in discouraged because I was in the farm and I had to give it up. I couldn't get boxes to put bananas once. I couldn't get seals. So I just wish you well and hope all the plans work out. But don't wait until the international airport. Look at Roseau there with the cruise ship. You have a ship coming right at the port there with three, three, four thousand people. And Roseau, you hardly find at least a hundred coming around the day front. The, 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 the things that was entertising them to come and to come off the ship in the afternoon. We, we remove it. It had a little bar there. A little guy had a little bar there that was entertaining in the afternoon. We break it down, we move it, and it's that that was promoting the, the island. Okay, we Ronnie. We our so, own selves, my brother. Have a good night. Thank you very much for the call, but we want the minister to answer, to respond. Yeah, yeah just, just briefly, I'm pretty sure. Thank you, Ronnie, for, for your intervention. In terms of, of, of the vessels he's speaking, mm-hmm. um, government believes in empowering the private sector. Um, I, I know that government has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars assisting boat owners in building the standards on the boat, in equipping it so that it could access the various spots in the region. So these even, are the boats that even, are... even assisting them in improving refrigeration on the boat as well. Um, um, I, I, I understand what this says about the procurement of the two vessels, but, I, but we believe in important people. There are persons with boat, and what they sometimes need is the support and assistance to, to, to enhance the boat to access certain ports by um, putting certain um, equipment instrument on it, etc. And for the fresh produce trade um, to put refrigeration, I know government has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars supporting boat owners in that regard. And um, I'm, I'm not too sure if there's no boat, but as I said earlier, I'm seeing many boats in here in Portsmouth. And what they do... They even go up north on rotation. So this week, when that set go, they stay down for a week. The other set goes. I think it's well programmed. Um, some may have some issues that did some repairs and some living enhancement, but I think we've 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 done well. I'm um, so far. Yeah. We were speaking on the um seven hundred million, and we didn't get to complete that. Yeah. Um, um, him also mentioned the twenty million that we import. Um, we just had the recent signing of the abattoir into yeah. the contract um, to really renovate, rehabilitate mm-hmm. the abattoir. Um, coming from that, we will need to fill the abattoir. So um, it's just, it's the, the building itself cannot do anything for us. We need the farmers to get on board. Right. Um, what are the plans, the ministry's plans in the interim, and how do we look to the future in terms of repopulating um, the production lines, etc.? Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure... Um in terms of our targets, um, the the apart uh, will will play a significant role in, in a role in um in assisting us in meeting our targets, and as I, I mentioned a bit earlier about the input substitution component of it, um, the abato had over forty something persons contracted producing um chicken um, um to to the abato, and that was consistently throughout the existence um of the of the abato. So having a new facility. Um, which we signed on, on Monday the contract with, with regional contractors of five million dollars and an additional 1.4 million with equipment to support the functions of the abattoir, like incinerators and backup generator, etc. That is a significant investment we're making in less of um, livestock sub sector. In addition to that picture, as I said earlier, we spent 
$7.4 million investing in resilient pens for farmers to grow chicken and pork. So it's not just building the abattoir as a standalone. We looked at the entire livestock value chain and hitting it from different points. So the farmers we are supporting now to build the resilient pens, we're expecting that they'll be contracted again when we reopen the abattoir to supply and our normal person that we would have sold to, we, you know, will come back on screen. As we speak, the farmers who are producing for the abattoir, we are finalizing arrangements with a private um, owner of abattoir um, to, to purchase the, the boots from them. I'm hoping during that period, um, whilst, we, whilst we construct, and once our construction phase is over and we commission, we'll re-engage our farmers and go in. In addition to that as well, we are looking to empower some of the producers as well um, to do their own processing. Um, hopefully, we'll support them under our agro-processing program where they can, you know, procure the pluckers and whatever equipment that they would need and set up their little, you know, butcher um, processing lines um, um, at the facility, of course, meeting standards as well. You know, so so that's that's the plan we have for livestock. Very promising, and we expect that it will make a dent um, um, in contributing towards our 700 million target. One of the things you mentioned um, is the public-private sector um, partnership, really. Yes, yes. Um, and linking farms to markets. Definitely. So um, what are some of the initiatives or, or some of the undertakings we have right now? We have the abattoirs being one. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, we more? have a few few infrastructure, um, agricultural infrastructure that, we, that we're working on. The abattoir being one. Um, we also have the coffee plant. And I mentioned earlier of the feed mill that we are looking to, to pursue as well. Um, but we believe... In making these investments, Petra, and have the private sector have a part to play in its management and an operation. So recently, we had an FAO consultant on island um, assisting the ministry in doing a private, a public-private partnership policy to at least guide us as to how we go into, you know, build that framework um, to engage private sector to manage and operate some of the infrastructure that we are investing in currently. Um, we believe that um, for efficiency and for transparency, you know, we believe that it will be better run by private sector, so it will be taken more as a business. You know, so that's the route that we're going in, but we are not going in blindly. We have been guided by that policy, which we're hoping to have completed by the time these infrastructures are ready for operation. And the infrastructures that you speak of are? Um, we speak of the National Abattoir, we speak of the coffee plant, and also the animal feed mill. Just to emphasize, repetition for emphasis. Um, we have well, we had a question from someone on the telephone. Um, he was asking about the five C's, and um, citrus being one and cannabis being the other, in terms of medicinal, etc. Can right. you speak to that in terms of the citrus? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, um, <laughs> but, but but the five C's uh, we 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 speak to at the ministry: citrus, um, coffee, cocoa. Coconuts. I'll, I'll 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 leave the other one for, for for next time. But but that too. What what we've observed, I'm um, Petra. Although we've done well in doing some level of rehabilitation, since Hurricane Maria, farmers had, farmers came out. They put your plants. The government gave for free, and we did some level. But we have not really seen a a structured replanting program since Hurricane Maria. Um, the demand and requests for citrus plants from the ministry is huge. That's why we've seen a lot of private nursery popping up and providing that something I think we need to control as well in order that we um, ensure that the public get clean and safe planting material. Having said that, um, we are now implementing an aggressive tree crop expansion program. We are now in preparatory phase. Um, first, we are doing a, some massive rehabilitation of the infrastructure on the public stations. You will see some movement in one mile. We, do, we are doing some work. We have plans to do some work as well at Woodfall Hill to expand Woodfall Hill, some work at La Plaine um, to ensure that we have the space to hold that kind of capacity that we are speaking about. As we speak, we've sown 100,000 citrus plants, as we speak, at one mile, unprecedented. 100,000? 100,000. We've never sown that much at any one time. And what is the space that we're looking time. at per acre? No, um, at, at, at 
we 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 sow the seeds to make, do the rootstock. Yes. And then we go into bringing the cyan yes. to do the necessary grafting so we can have different varieties of seeds. But in terms um, of, the, of citrus, mm -hmm, in terms mm -hmm. of the spacing for a farmer, uh, how many plants per acre we look at? We look at fifty if you go twenty five by twenty five. Okay. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so that and we are now looking at bringing clean planting material because you know we've suffered from Christelia which has ravaged the citrus um, subsector. We also had the citrus greening, which is still affecting that. So most of the plants we have on island are diseased. Hence the reason that why we'll import the sand material to make sure they are clean. Um, so we can have very clean material to distribute and sell to farmers. And, and of course, new varieties as well um, to introduce. So end of this year into next year, we'll have quite a bit available and we will continue with that aggression to ensure that we have a lot of tree crop planting material for farmers. Um, cocoa is another one. The, the demand for cocoa is huge. We have a, a growing subsector where people do a lot of processing using cocoa as their, um, as their material. Um, the ministry has done well doing a lot of distribution of cocoa plants and selling and for the past two years we have been rehabilitating a lot of abandoned fields and um and so we have quite a bit of acreages now established and we are going to continue to do that coffee a little bit more sensitive to propagate because it does well at a particular elevation so we are speaking to forestry to see if we can utilize one of their um propagation stations um in Pocasi so we can expand on the production of coffee um, because post morph and the wood for is not that conducive. The, the agro eco zone is not conducive for the propagation of coffee. We need that elevation for it to thrive better. And um, of course, coconuts is one of them. Um, we have we, we we brought in fourteen thousand plants. They are still under quarantine um, to ensure that we do all the necessary before we do, we do a distribution. Um, and we will keep bringing it in to expand um, on the freshwater not um, subsector, which is growing as well. And and the last thing, cannabis, of course, um, we will we're looking at medicinal cannabis to ensure that we have the legal frameworks in place, so that an investor or we ourselves that want to invest in it, you know, we are guided by law. But that again is a very very good niche market that that we're looking at. But we'll keep it to medicinal. So we're not opposed to cannabis. No, medicinal. Right. Medicinal. Right. We just want to get that yes, clear. Medicinal. Okay. So yes. um, we know that white potato season is on right now. Yes, it is, you, uh -huh. it is we on. It is on. We do have a caller, so I don't. Yes, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes, hello, hello. Good evening. Hello. Okay. Yes. Good evening. Before the minister leave, I want to ask him one more question. I want to be too long. Mm -hmm. We, the small business minister, I think you're representing us under the small business, the people that do manufacturing. We was we asking for the the barracoon building. It's the something I bring up to me. To Miss Shakira, not Shakira, the lady from Pebush that representing Pebush. Lakia. Yeah. Lakia. She do also, she do processing. She do yes. manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So we write up a proposal to the government. If you know that building where we used to have the court, that is by the city council. It's facing the, 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 the ferry terminal right to the road there. Yeah. It just closed up there for a while now. Now some of the roof. The roof is still on. There's some galvanized that want to put back on it. We have some money in the bank for small business in the aid bank. Why? Why the government didn't find a way to to at least repair the roof and um, put some facilities? Because we're looking at a spot where we can put our products to sell um, local products mm -hmm. that the people want when they're traveling. And Wadix also wanted an office space so that he can help to represent the people that are going to Guadeloupe and Martinique for medical attention because you know what it's have that strong connection yeah but we uh, it's a we write up to her you know we write up a proposal to her and she says she was going to take it up to cabinet but minister tried to help us in that area there and even the money in the in the, in the bank some people are getting it and some not getting it mm -hmm. i myself i write up a program there for almost two years and it's some just don't come in true and you know i just want to to, to represent us so that some of our products can go out because i heard all that some of our products in china in in all the last program all that up there have a good night yes so thank you yes okay. sir. thank you caller yes so mr minister mm -hmm. yes we're on white potatoes yes yes this is 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 on and we have already i'm um, started um harvesting um so far we've seen some 
nice size um of 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 sizes of um, um body tool and of course the quality is is as usual very very good and impressive better than than what we import for sure um the challenge we had this this year um we that the see that we that seeds we receive um a bit late you know so it posed a challenge um um in the uptake from farmers um, because some farmers will not plant at a particular time you know so we so we basically do no assessment as we speak as to how we're going to approach next year um to see um if we can import um the seeds a bit earlier and uh, we should encourage more farmers more farmers to plant but generally we've we we are having a, a good season um as usual is something that the farmers do well um this year we were able to get in bank on bobby first um who created a special program for farmers to earn lend monies to invest in red potato and of course dexy has been playing a very, very critical role in importing the seeds and buying buying the harvested potato at a very good price and and selling to and, and selling to the supermarkets as well you know so we are looking forward to, to to a better season next year, but this year we've 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 done pretty well, and we want to encourage farmers to take advantage of that, um, because as we said, it's a quick cash crop. Um, sixty days, ninety days, um, you can you, you can make a big profit from that crop. We have glossed over Dexes because I mean it's really significant, and Mr. Minister, yes. when you look at our farm to market approach, I know you're one of the people mm -hmm. who really advocate and believe this. Um, tell us a little bit more of that and how you see that has been working the procurement facility. Um, with funding from the World Bank, yes. um, Cirque Project, yes. and Dexia, and the farmers. Yes, I, uh, that that was just, uh, uh, how I can say it, a program that solves many problems, many issues. Um, we we must be frank with ourselves. At some point, you know, the farmers have has lost, had lost confidence in the market. Um, they would have, not just for Dexia, even said into Hoxters, um, they would have delay in payment. Um, they still sometimes, you know, had the reputation some to pay a bit late, not nothing of the fault. Sometimes the, the hawksters themselves would take the commodities from the farmers, give them 50%, promise them that when they come back, they're going to pay, and some of the hawksters may have excuse why they cannot pay. The Prime Minister has seen that, and he advised that we're going to have that procurement facility provide the money to Dexia, where Dexia has that revolving fund to pay farmers within 48 hours. And perhaps I can tell you, since we've implemented that, farmers are happy. Dexia has seen an increased number of farmers coming to them. But I will say uh, the, 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 the facility is not only to pay farmers. Dexia can also extend to assist the hucksters, you know, to breach, you know, their, their financing um, so that they could pay their farmers as well on time. You know, and that has opened quite a bit of doors. Um, we've seen on ground the expansion and interest of farmers back into the farms and coupled with the market access Dexia has, um, you know, this will create a huge impact on the agricultural sector for sure. It's not a case where Dexia is really pushing out the huckster? No, not at all. They are facilitating the huckster's trade because if a huckster would need some money to pay the farmer on time, Dexia can have some arrangement with them on that as well. As well. Speaking of um, the farmers and um, selling, um, we see that a number of consumers have been complaining sometimes. The price of commodities per pound, the dashing is at 250 retail, $3, yams at 5 today, Kush Kush was at 8 mm -hmm. And then the lady said she'd negotiate with me. <laughs> I could get it for five. Um, <laughs> breadfruit is $5. Um, are farmers pricing themselves out of the market? You see, picture, you know, pricing are based on the laws of supply and demand. That is what. Um, and sometimes with the variability in economic conditions, farmers not expecting what they get, so they're trying to make it up, you know, on the field that they have. But, but what we encourage extension to do is to let's educate farmers a bit more as to the cost of production. I mentioned that earlier at a meeting in, in Anzime um, um, today. Um, a cost of production for, for dashing, for example, if it's 55 cents, because in time of an extension, it's 35 40 cents. So let's say inflation, it might be 55 now. And farmers would not want to sell for less than a dollar. I'm not saying that they should, they should eh? but just to show the comparison. So I think if farmers are educated more on the cost of production, when they're pricing, they can be more informed when they're pricing so that they can be more competitive. And that's the challenge sometimes we face with 
before our regional markets with Dashin. Um, St. Vincent sells it a bit cheaper um, than us, and sometimes, you know, they take a preference over some buyers from us. You know, so I think we need to do more as a ministry to really go out and assist farmers in understanding the cost of production so when they're priced in the commodity, they'll be a bit more informed. Do have another caller? Caller, can you hear us? Hello. Yeah, good night. Hi. Good, good evening. Good evening. Good Minister night, sir. Roy, that voice sounds evening. familiar. Good evening. Ah. <laughs> 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 how are you? Good evening to you too, madam. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you doing tonight? Very well. Well, I'm much better, I should say. Okay, Comrade, great. good night. I, Thank you. You just yes, came from night. the farm? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I tried, you know. I can, I'll give you talking about coming from the farm. I'll give you a story about this about this farmer who's on tonight. <laughs> oh. I was the Minister of Agriculture. They brought me to see, you know, a farm of two young men. <laughs> yes. It, 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 was, it was Malcolm. <laughs> yes, Malcolm Wallace. Yeah, Malcolm Wallace and, and, and Roland Roy. That is it. <laughs> were, yes, you impressed uh, with their, were, were you impressed with their farm? That's why I'm, that's why I'm so excited <laughs> to know that, that one has emerged as the Minister of Agriculture. <laughs> yeah, there is you that CDB, I, I believe. Yes. You know, yes, yes. I am really comforted by that because that, that's a man who actually can practice what he, what he teaches, not just preaches, but teaches. Mm -hmm. and, him, and he's still an active farmer today. And never mind the, the part-time thing. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I think we need people like yourself involved in, in agriculture. For sure. And to ensure to bring us a level of, and talking about pricing, even the whole issue of pricing, being able to reduce the, the unit cost, being able to reduce the cost of production yep. and improve, increasing yield, you know, productivity so that we can, we can see better, better prices in the market. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you, you know. We, we, we need to do that. But it, it's difficult for the farmers. And it, it takes some, some serious effort because, as you said earlier, Minister, the price of inputs, for example, fertilizer in particular, that the vagaries of the international you know, global market for uh, petroleum, petroleum products, definitely, when you start looking at even the cost of shipping and the logistics mm -hmm. challenges throughout the world, that is clearly those things impact on agricultural production and the cost of production. And we, we have we have to, to do everything we can within our power to see how we can reduce this this um continuing escalation prices. But I, I wanna I, I'm I'm also very very encouraged when I when I hear you talk about irrigation. Irrigation has been one of my biggest concerns. And I'm I'm very, very encouraged. Although you you refuse to to venture into my, my, my pet project no we are, is, we, ground water. <laughs> we we are considering <laughs> ground water we are um, yeah but I, I honestly believe and you 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 highlighted the point about the impact of climate change and you know global warming effect effectively and and how it is affecting agricultural production and productivity and clearly um, irrigation is a, is a key component and part of that has to be looking at at groundwater as a source yes of irrigation and um, and you you also I would add to what you said as well and we need to utilize renewable energy as the power source. Yes. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, those days, it, 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 you get pretty cheap, um, well, cost-effective water pumps mm -hmm. that are capable of being, being powered through solar panels. And, you know, two, 300 watt solar panels can, can, you know, give you at least a half power that can you know, do a significant, significant amount of irrigation for a farmer and he doesn't have to worry about the cost. You know, once you, it will take you at least six months to, to get your, your, your money back. That is to say, if you're comparing it strictly to powering it from, from De the grid. Definitely, from, yeah. From dumb like. So, so we, we, I am happy to know that we're looking at modernizing agriculture, looking at new technologies, looking at how we can effectively reduce the cost and increase productivity and that is that is great news great news for agriculture well i before you ask me any question i try i want to say um you know the point of of um i heard the minister touting the the great achievements and and the other thing the leadership of of the um, prime minister for creating the revolving fund of dexia and that fund i believe can give can be the shot in the arm to agriculture if used properly, and, and that I say if used properly, because what we're seeking to do at Dexia is to 
encourage new entrants and to also work with the existing ones to expand production and enhance productivity. And that is that is what I'm hoping we can do. And mm-hmm. the point, you know, and, and, and to partner with, with Hoxters. We have we have reached out to them, we have invited them, we've met with with their representative body to encourage them to come to us and and, and you know right. access the the financing that we have available. It's a credit facility. You know, and, mm-hmm. and it is there. We we really hope that we can see more more, more takers and, and, and to expand the opportunities uh, that, that are there for farmers and, and, and hucksters as well. And and we hope in this year we started doing doing some work on three main crops. We're looking at planting. Um, soon we'll be looking at dashing and sweet potatoes. Uh, of course, that is in addition to the other crops that Dexia has always been, been involved in purchasing. And um, vegetables as well. We, we definitely have to, to go into encouraging, you know, production, sheltered greenhouses with irrigation and helping to get the consistency. And that is what we're really aiming at, getting consistency in production in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture. So, Minister, I am, I am very happy that you are on tonight and you're putting it out there. I hope you know we, we have to continue doing that. Definitely. Oh yeah, we have we have a lot we have a lot to share, and and, and I'm happy that you've taken the lead and, and and to be out there presenting the the report as it were. There's a lot of work to be done. Um, access roads, yes, farm access roads, still a challenge in a number of areas. But we have to bear in mind that it's only seven years ago we were hit by a major hurricane. And you said we've we've invested thirty million to date, and and counting. Uh, I know even in my own area, we have provided support to the farmers. We had a one point three million dollar farm rehabilitation, farm access road rehabilitation in Mahaton. And in addition to that, we've also invested another sixty mil, sixty sorry sixty thousand to to do some improvement on that side. And recently, another fifty thousand on the Mopo side. To give farmers better access to their farms, so I'm, I'm really encouraging the farmers of the Grandi constituency. Great stuff. Today, you know, today I went, I went um to to, to a section in um Grand Colibri, great land there, Minister. Minister, I heard you talking about mechanization and that our terrain doesn't lend to you know the kind of heavy mechanization. But I have one for you, you know. Yes. Take the 15 acres in 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 um Grand Colibri. And you have all the flat land that you need to, to mechanize and to become the model of production. Well, very good. With mechanization. <laughs> I mean, I went there today with my partner, Deluxe. Deluxe and I went up there and we, we, we walked a, a good distance. We drove, we drove through and then we walked a good distance. And I can tell you, man, it's amazing. It's a lot of flat land. The challenge is irrigating that area. Because yes. You know, so that's why you mean to consider your your your, your groundwater initiative, minister. Well, we did we did a few tests, you know. We tested a few areas, you know. I tell you, I take my thing seriously, you know. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, it's an area I, I think we should um we should con- we should explore the tapping in groundwater in that area, and if 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 that can be achieved, and, and you're looking at a significant agricultural area, I mean it's it's amazingly flat. I I couldn't believe, you know, every time I I, I pass in this area, I couldn't believe there's so much flat land. <laughs> In Dominica, and I uh, hope that we can, uh, you know, consider utilizing it for agricultural production on a very large scale. So, Minister, I I don't want to take more of your time, and but I know your callers still looking for. Oh, sorry, sorry, Madam, sorry. No, no, I have a question. Or two. <laughs> I, you know, I have a question. I know, I know, I know, <laughs> Mr. Minister. I know, I know, I know. He's um, he's mo. He's water supply and I. <laughs> Mr. Minister, what would you say to a farmer right now who's still hesitant about the procurement facility at Dexia? I mean, that farmer may have produce and just doesn't feel comfortable. But as the minister responsible for yeah. trade and Dexia, what would you say to that farmer while you're on the airwaves? Well, well, I'll, I'll, say, I'll, I'll say what I said to some of them I've met in my constituency. But also recently in, 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 um, in Bells, I went up to Gomielik, which is where I, I have a small farm minister. Nothing like yours, you know, I just trying to think. <laughs> and I met some farmers and I encouraged them. I encouraged them. And we, we, we really had a confidence gap. People, farmers generally were reluctant because they felt the payments, both, both in terms of the, the amount that we pay, 
you know, the price to pound, the unit price, as well as the, the speed of which. And a guy made a very important point to me, and I went back, went back to Dex and I had that discussion. Why two days? Why can't you just give me a check? You know, I don't expect you to be walking around with cash. So I had to explain to them, your money is sure. You, you will get it in two days. We have to be able to do a number of things, although I still see the point that he made because I'm saying that if the Hoxers can do it, why can't we? And one of the things that I, I got out of that conversation was that, well, my brother, bring your, bring your skill, bring your equipment, come, come well equipped. Weigh the thing right there. Tell us how you want it, what you expect. Wait right there and, 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 and let's make a deal. You know, sign the check. So it's something that we'll be looking at. But I would say to the farmers that the confidence, they, they don't have to worry because the money is there. And we have done it. We went to, for example, let me give you a case in point. We went to Santover for Bay Oil. And mm -hmm. let's, we, wrote, we wrote checks by next day. By next day, we, we had the checks prepared for over $200,000 for farmers in that area. We had the checks ready. The next day, they, they picked up the checks and never had an issue. Yes, so so yes. Dexia has the facility. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is guaranteed. You know, it will turn around quickly. We are still looking at how we can improve it even further. And, and, and that, is, that is some of the things that we, we're looking at to encourage farmers. But I also want to encourage new entrants, people who are looking at new technologies, hydroponics, you know, people looking at, at, at you know, farming, but taking it to another level, right. especially the use of hydroponics and, and um, other, other technologies. Like I said, I spoke about how we can mm -hmm. utilize renewable energy to help mm -hmm, with production, mm -hmm. you know, if the UV lights. Uh, we know we know guys use UV light for their production in our in, in their greenhouses. So why don't why can't we do it for for our own vegetables and and, and stuff and and to especially younger people? It's an exciting opportunity for you right now, you know. And we can make this better. We can make this better, but we have to be willing to see this as as a great business opportunity. And I believe it is because we've seen the successes that people have had. And we know the challenges, especially with, with um, labor. But if you can have more mechanization, you can reduce the, the need, you know, for, for manpower, as it were. Mm -hmm. I hate to use the expression. I, I, try, I agree with you. you know, I, I heard you telling the minister, we, 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 men, we men strong too. We can <laughs> yep. work, you know. Yes, we can do the thing, boy. Don't, don't, yeah, man, don't try that on us. I, I try that. correct him. <laughs> because I know some, some powerful women farmers, you know. Yeah, of course. And, and um, we, we need to... We, we need that's what I'm saying. If we encourage the use of technology and we, we make this thing more attractive, less labor intensive, we we will be able to, to encourage new entrants and could also deal in addition to the the one of the options that you've proposed, the solutions minister, I know you've given great leadership to seeking to get um, farm labor, that we can look at ways that our that we can reduce the, the, the demand for, for labor by using um, technology, mechanization where possible, yes. and, and methods of, of, of agriculture that can, that can reduce significantly, like especially if you're looking at, at hydroponics and vertical farming and, yeah. and you're yeah. looking at, you know, at systems that can help you get massive production in, in, with, with very little input. So we, we, we have to, to um, encourage those, and I know you are, Minister. I'm excited about the possibilities of the partnership with um with the government of china uh, when they when when they will be providing us with more more equipment for hydroponics and with more more supply um and, and uh, with technical support at, at diamond and um i i think all those things are essential especially when you talk about youth in agriculture and naya and the role that naya can play can play to help us to secure a future for agriculture i think um all of these are, are areas that we need to we need to work on so I'm, I'm very excited. Well done, Minister. Well done. From day one, you put your boots on. It wasn't difficult because you had it in the back of your pickup. <laughs> Unlike me, that, that I had to go and buy a boot. When, 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 when Piero made me Minister of Agriculture, I had to go and buy a boot. And I had to go and buy land to make a farm. But um, you, you had that already. You came with that. So you had a head start. So keep running, brother. Keep running. And I, I'm really excited about this. Keep, keep, keep running. And I think there's a lot of exciting opportunities ahead for us in agriculture definitely yeah. thank you minister i appreciate your intervention tonight man thanks for the support uh, thanks for your call You're welcome.
Mr. Well, Minister, we only have, well, we've gone past time. We've but, gone past time. But we've given a five to ten minute grace. Yes. And what I want to mention is that I know as a past extension officer, you cannot live here without tackling this. Yes. So yes. extension officers are considered the backbone mm -hmm. to the industry, mm -hmm. to the sector. I mean, sometimes when people come from larger, more developed countries, they're amazed mm -hmm. at the level of um, synergies between extension and farming. Mm -hmm. However, some farmers are really complaining mm -hmm. that they are not their extension officer is not visible enough is not really in tune mm -hmm. with them mm -hmm. um have you gotten that um feedback and if so how do we look at tackling that because that might be a major issue yes for some yes I'm, I'm i'm happy you raised it because it's, it's a conversation that i i i been having you know with the director head of extension and even some of the officers um themselves even during mid the farmers tour um, in the town halls, you know, the farmers mentioned it as well as to the visibility um, of, of extension. And um, extension needs to understand that they are the face of the ministry. You are the frontline guys. You are the one on the field representing the ministry on the front line. Um, Majority of the guys are doing excellent. Um, they take their work seriously. They report on time. And you can see it based on the subregion that they operate. Um, it's, it's, it's evident. As an old extensionist myself, I, I can easily identify who's doing what and, 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 and who's not doing. But having said that, the role extension plays is very critical in meeting our targets and ensuring that we, we, we have food security and enhancing our production and productivity on, on island. Um, so the what we have done for the past year and a half I've been in, and even before that, we are trying to build capacity. Um, some of the the extension officers are not specialized extensionists. Like like when I um, side extension a year or two after, um, heavily encouraged by, by, by Mr. Leslie, I went to, to IKEA. So that's where you would train to be an extension officer so you come back with that mindset that tooling um to really transfer that technology to to farmers so it was like transfused into your blood you so went you to school to be an extension yes officer. so it make you an extensionist so so i suspect um you know some of these trainings we have been doing i know some of the guys now are doing postgraduate diploma um with, with ue on that we encourage them for the world bank program we we we, we supported them in in building capacity as well and it's, and it's something that we've been, will continue to do. Um, we know of the challenges some of them face. Um, extension is one of the public service positions that you would need mileage. Some of the guys were not qualified for that and are still not. And um, we know the issues with extension mobility and the limited transportation that we had to get them from point A to point B. Um, even those who that have had or are qualified for 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 mileage um would have exhausted that within a two weeks period and limits them to to go in and uh, but recently um graciously um we got approval to procure additional free vehicles for them um which will you they will utilize you know to reach out to the farmers um, um more often um as we wish you know so i, I want to encourage them um to to do what they do seriously the role in our targets and in food security and the increasing production and productivity is key. Uh, without them, we cannot do it. Sometimes the farmers want to see them, you know, because many times the experience the farmers have is not too much extension can tell them. Sometimes it's just the company because the extension is a, is a consular. They, they, they're, they're everything because it's you a social worker, you know, so your presence on the farm means a lot, you know. Um, um, so, outside of the normal demonstrations and the farmers meeting and the and the different um, technology transfer um, strategies that they use, um, they need to understand the presence is a lot. Um, and when a farmer sees an extension officer on his farm, that farmer feels very, very important. And they must know that. So, I'm, I, I want to encourage them to go out more often, meet with your farmers. We know the issue of mobility. We are addressing it. We just got approval to put your free additional vehicles. Utilize it and make sure that your farmers are taken care of. Because without the farmers, you as an extension officer do not have a job. So you must know that. And I must say, since I'm in as minister, they're very supportive. 
I must say, in all the, all the regions, and we're like brothers, we work together, you know, but they know where the journey line. They know when it's business, it's business. And I want to encourage them to, to continue working hard, and I'm there 100% behind them to support them in, in, in whatever that they're doing. On the flip side, though, we have farmers, and we have trainings, demonstrations, and we do not see them showing up. It's the same set of farmers that continue to show up. Yes. 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 So, yes. So what 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 is your word to farmers? Because these things cost money. Yes. They cost time, resources. And and I'm happy you said that because you can see the difference in farmers' output by right? those who come to training and those that are not coming to training. It's like if you show up to school. Yeah. E exactly. Exactly. I know of one farmer in Capuchin. I'll call her name Julius Cabon John Baptist. Mrs. John Baptist goes to every training. It could be Rousseau, it could be Grand Bay, it could be Marigot. For the soccer machine, she's there. And she has built capacity so much, she makes her own manures, her own manure teas, and, and her own fertilizer. And there's nothing you can ask about agriculture in pest and mismanagement and organic farming and her poultry production system that she can't answer because of the interest, you know, she, she, she has and she continues to attend farming, you know. So... It's not wasting time, farmers, when you're invited, but it's to build a capacity to load. Because sometimes the technology changes so quickly. Sometimes we may have an introduction of a new pest and disease, you know, a new way of doing things you need to be aware of, you know, so you need to show up. Don't only show up when, you know, something is coming. You need to show up all the time, you know, and, and we, we keep supporting you and, and, and doing that. But I also want to encourage them to, to respond to extension when they do that. But but as I always say, the the one-to-one um, mentoring, you know, is, is more impactful and better. So I'll still flip it on the picture to ask the officers to go on the farm um, more often um, so that they can do that one-on-one -on -one mentoring with the farmers directly on the farms. Okay, so Minister, we've passed our time. I know we have a number of other topics. Yes. Can I be assured that you will return? Um, yes, I will, um, whenever yes. you are ready. But, you know, we have <laughs> other ministers to come in. Yes. Um, but I will encourage maybe your next program, you may want to bring in the guys from the from the project mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. there are many interventions that we're doing that people need to know of, of and especially the value of the interventions that that we're making um you and so i guess you and your ps will set the, the schedule yes, yes yeah, of but, course but, but speaking of the project yeah. um yeah. have in your estimation a farmer a technician mm -hmm. a minister a pal rep how has the emergency agricultural um, livelihoods program really benefited Dominica? That's the program post Hurricane Maria. When yes, I, I, as I said, Petra, that is the program that really resuscitated the, the sector after Hurricane Maria. I mean, with the, the, the grants program, the investment in buying animal feed and fertilizer, the various inputs and machineries that were procured to hand on the farmers, that's what really triggered the reinvestment on the farm. You know, so the impact is, is is there to see you know i'm i'm, I'm currently and of course the, the the team will speak more to the other investment that we're making in, in in infrastructure um as as i mentioned earlier and not only that but also the fishes component we're investing as well in spending over two million dollars just to rehabilitate fishery sites as we speak um um so we have out for tender three we have an additional six which are grouped so we'll see New fishy sites in, in Sufuye, Scott said, some works in Newton, some works in Focoli, in Sto, you know, in San Sauve, um, Capuchin, Bioch, Dubla. All these areas will be treated with re rehabilitation works um, on fishes landing sites. And these works will be conducted by external um, contractors? No, or? what we are encouraging is the area that the landing sites are located will invite contractors from that location. So in BH Dubla, we'll invite contractors from BH Dubla, Newton the same, Falkland the same, Mao the same. So we want to empower the contractors in the localities to, to do the job as well. All right. So that sounds good in terms of keeping the money and the livelihoods afloat Definitely. in these places. That, that's what we're talking okay, about. Okay. So Mr. Minister, we want to say thank you for coming yes. onto the program. I know you may have some final comments and some encouragement mm -hmm. to anybody in the sector right now. So I will leave you to it and then we conclude. Yes. Thank you, Petra, for having me to open the button on this new program, AgriAction. Um, it's a program that we that we have designed to really bring all the facts out there to, to the general public as to what we're doing in agriculture because we are investing heavily. I want to thank my permanent secretary, Ryan Amsterdam, of course, my technical team, and my colleague, um, Minister um, Defoe and, and Palsek, um, 
Lucky Exclusive for their tremendous support and partnership in getting things done at the ministry over the years. Um, the director and staff, extension officers, but most importantly, the farmers. Um, they are the ones who are on the ground daily, toiling, have their hands dirty, taking the rain, taking the sun, ensuring that we have food to put on our table and for food in the market so people can procure and to ensure food and nutrition security on island. So thank you for having me, um, Petra, and I look forward to doing this anytime in the future. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Minister. That was Agri Action. As the Minister rightly said, it's a program that will be on once per month, but we will do as much as we can to educate, inform, and keep the information factual to the farmers, the fishers, the processors. We want to remind you that um, the World Bank Funded Project is still on, and the circ component of it has just been launched last week. Um, the deadlines to apply are the 17th of April, which is next Wednesday. So if you're a processor, please um, look at our Facebook page at the government's website and all social media platforms to get the forms and information. Um, if you're a farmer, you go to the various agricultural regions, you speak with your extension officer. And this program is really designed to really keep you in the sector, but get you back on your feet when it comes to proper harvesting, proper um, packaging, etc., of agricultural commodities. As the minister rightly said, the airport is on stream right now in terms of the construction. So we are looking to have products that are 100% Dominican, but with an international standard. So no little plastics here and there, and we don't have packaging that's right and labeling that's right. And as you know, the Minister of Agriculture has been involved in um, dumb gap certification, etc. So that is one of the sticklers for us in agriculture to ensure that we are top notch when it comes to commodities fitting the local market, yes, but ready for the international market and the world order, the wider world where the money is, where people have their standards set at a higher bar sometimes as they're not familiar with the product. But we want to encourage you, farmers, to go into the regions and speak with your officer. Speak with the secretary. They normally have a lot of information for you. And if you're not a farmer, you need to get registered today. Don't tell us that you're involved in agriculture and then you haven't registered. We do not have you in your, our database. We do not know you if you're not registered with us. We may be familiar, but we want to ensure that you have your farmer ID number and your bio data is in our system when assistance, etc., comes on. So that's it for us until next month. You will hear from us again. Another production of the Ministry of Agriculture, AgriAction for the farmers out there.